Hey everybody, I'm back. Well, I've been back from vacation since May, but uh, I got swamped at work and I've had setup issues with audio um, not syncing properly. And I think part of it is the 4K monitor and configuring frame rates, etc. And then I have a dead column of pixels right now. Uh, and this brand new monitor, but Dell said they're sending me a new one. Hi, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Julie Ng, I'm an engineer with Microsoft, and in my daily job, I help onboard customers to Azure. Part of my job is also uh, working on documentation, maintaining sort of open source projects that are demos like this one. I made it part of my job. It wasn't part of the job description. So in this short video uh, that I recorded this morning, you'll watch me discover that I have merge conflicts, approach it using both the command line as well as github.com, as well as Visual Studio Code. Um, me talking through, okay, this is how you would do rebasing on the command line. And then realizing, no, I would probably have done it another way, which I also said, and that is squashing. Or also you can do a git reset of the head. So it's not scripted. A couple of things I could probably explain better with diagrams, but I wanted to share video with you quickly. Um, you get to see what I'm working on as a Microsoft engineer. You get to see real sort of open source code, a project that's properly maintained with pipelines, etc. which now you know is a lot of work. Um, so yeah, I think without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So how did I know there was a merge conflict? Um, I realized this is still red and I said, why? I thought this was working and I realized it was because I had been doing it in a branch and I never merged it back into main. So when I clicked new pull requests, it said, oh, it can't merge. Um, and I knew that probably meant I didn't take the code uh, that came in from another pull request into this one. So it's important when you're working with merge conflicts to know which code you prefer, which one you want. So I am in the fix pipeline branch and I'm going to go into the Azure pipelines uh, subdirectory so that I have the YAML um, that should be working according to the screen check. Uh, for reference, if we flip over to main, it should be red, right? So that's a good indicator of what we want. So let's go back to the other branch. I have already pulled the main code. So earlier when I did, I'm going to try to type everything out. Um, when I went to the main branch, it wasn't up to date with um, origin. So with GitHub, so then I had to do git pull origin main. I'm going to use a checkout, which is the dash to go back to the branch where I was before. So GitHub also helpfully tells me that I am one commit behind main. So if I try to do um, a rebase, which means I want to take all the commits that I have on main and put it below my branch, its current state, I can do git rebase. Um, I already have the local changes, so I could just do main, but one of the things I often do is actually just uh, put the remote in there just to be, um, yeah, totally paranoid. So let's try that. And it's going to say, oh, there's a conflict. Um, so I like resolving the conflicts in the command line um, in terms of Git. I still look in uh, code, VS code. But if you read everything, um, Git is super helpful in terms of how to fix things. So it says there's a merge conflict in this file. Um, there's a couple of things that I did and I should try to fix it. And when I am done with the code, so I should save the file. All I have to do is type git rebase continue. Um, if I want to skip this, I can just sort of skip it. I don't usually skip things because I don't know if then something is broken. I do do this a lot. <laughs> I try to rebase and does it work? Does it not work? Um, and if it doesn't work, then it is possible just to say, okay, I give up. Let me go back to the state that I had before. Okay. So now I'm Visual Studio Code and I'm looking at the merge conflict and you'll see that I'm trying to move some variables to stage to debug it. And that is this piece um, here. It is also down here somewhere in the bash script. And um, I was trying to test if, okay, maybe I need to put this here to try to load the key vault. Um, this was added sort of a little bit later. It's a bit messy. I think um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, 
solve it this way, because I know I was doing debugging, I actually would maybe just sort of squash some commits, but I think maybe just to show how I would solve or resolve merge conflicts, I'll continue this path anyway. So let's, this is the commit it is trying to do. So let's remove this, bring that up, it's fine. Uh, we don't need this either. So in very in stages, we have variables. We do have jobs. These are new steps, which I did want. Um, do I still want to keep the debugging? Sure, why not? Um, actually, no, this is done here now. So that means I can remove this bash. And this looks about right. The bottom part looks about clean. I know this doesn't work uh, from later testing, but that's fine. The bottom part looks clean. And just to show you what that means in Git, um, let's look at Git status. So it'll tell me what to do. Um, and uh, what I can do is mark the resolution, right? So I can add that file now. I only have one, but I'll just add it to be... Um, squeaky clean. And then we can do git status again, because I'm like, what should I do next? And it's like, oh, all conflicts are fixed, then you should do this, git rebase continue. So it's bringing me the commit message that I had before. So I was trying to move the variables to stage. That's what it's still doing. I'm just going to say yes. I'm going to do uh, write and quit. And hopefully there isn't any more, but of course there is. So now I've resolved the conflict for one commit out of eight, and I'm not gonna do the next seven. There's a better way. Okay, let's try something else instead. I don't wanna fix sort of eight commits individually of just me debugging and moving the same lines over and over. So going back to GitHub, I see this branch is eight commits ahead, but one commit behind main. So let's just check what the last eight plus one, so nine are, and you can see that this is um, some merge request getting put into the branch. And the rest of this is me sort of debugging stuff. I am basically going to unset or reset them as individual commits. I still wanna keep the changes. I just don't wanna keep all those commits. So what I can do is git reset head and I can do a tilde and say, I want the last eight, just undo them. So if I come back to this now, you can see, oh, I still have the um, this one, which my guess is in the main branch somewhere, um, but these are not. So now I have git status. Um, I have these files are new, and then this one, these are changed. What if I look at them now, let's go back into VS code. So you can see I added these and this is actually the change that I wanted, the refs head production, because um, it doesn't quite work the way I expected when using is main and is production. Because when I load that from VARS global, for whatever reason, this is getting processed and this is in the same scope level and it's just, it's not available yet. So I have to do the bare bones build source branch detection. This is exactly what I want. I don't have to, you know, fuddle with um, all the in-between code. So what I'm going to do is just do git add and uh, just do git commit. And I'm gonna say, um, just fix pipeline code. I'm going to squash these anyway. Um, so it doesn't really matter what I said, although I'm super pedantic and I can show you how to change a commit. So I don't like that fixed pipeline code. So what I can do is come back. I'm going to do an amend. And so I just want to change. So I'm going to say fix pipeline. Um, uh, let's see. Branch name targets um, as variables. So a little bit more sort of detail. You saw that when I was trying to debug the rebasing, the commit message told me what I was trying to do. So it's not a great sentence, but that's fine. I can figure that out later. So I know this has all the changes um, from the tip of the fixed CD pipeline that is on the GitHub remote. So what I'm going to do, because this is not a protected branch, I can just do git push. I'm gonna force push this into, um, 
into there. I use a Yubi key um, to connect to GitHub. Actually, I did that too quickly. What I really want to do is actually rebase origin main now, and there should be less conflicts for me to deal with. So, or I just less steps anyway. So, all right, so there's four CD, schedule drift and the different steps. All right, so let's look at this in code. So now I'm in scheduled uh, drift and we see exactly what I want. So these don't work, like I said, so let's get rid of those. Um, if they don't work in that scope, we need instead to use this. So that looks about right. This has to be indented on that level, looks good. So let's go back to CD. So probably be the same thing. Yes, we want to keep that. Um, there's a CD stage. So this doesn't work. We don't want that. Um, maybe we want that title instead of CD stage. CD deployment sounds a bit nicer. And the rest of this looks good. And so there was some uh, steps, I think debug. So yes, I think I do want that code. It's a bit nicer just to put some headings in there. And the other step was, I think confirm that the key vault is loaded. Oh yes, lots of code. Um, so when I was initially doing it, I was just putting stuff in using asterisk. What I do like to do when I'm cleaning up code later is actually use emojis because this is just a visual cue that allows me to know what happens without actually ever reading the message, right? So maybe you'll read it once the very first time, but after that, I tend to never read it again. Um, so let's get rid of the other bits. We don't need it. Um, and notice I'm just checking or selecting everything between the brackets and the equal signs. And now this looks good. Okay, so we have those four brand, uh, files, CD debug vars, confirm key vault loaded and schedule drift debug vars, perfect. So let's do that. Um, and it will tell me probably git rebase continue. Continue. So that was the um, commit message that I made earlier after I kind of squished everything. And now that works. So now I want to do a git force push. Um, so that when I create a pull request now, it should say uh, it's fine. There's no merge conflicts. So let's wait for that to push. And let's come back here. So let's go. I want the branches view, but I think I'm zoomed in so much, it doesn't show me the link that I'm looking for. So let's go to this. This is running. I'm going to open that up. I'm zoomed in too much, but that's okay. So we're going to wait for this um, to run. And what I can do is start the pull request and you'll see that now it says green, able to merge. So I'm actually going to uh, clean this up a little bit later, but let's just open the pull requests first. So I can show you that um, you can't merge it, right? It's going to wait for that to pass before merging. And one of the options here that um, I'm going to use is squash and merge. So I already squashed like seven of those eight commits um, because I had a merge conflict but you can as well just sort of squash them here in the pull request. If I come over here to pipelines, let me make this bigger and full screen so that you can see this one passed pretty quickly. It just lints and validates, it doesn't do much. Let's look at the other ones. This one is running, so let's check it out. And it is at the point where it is going to do the drift detection. And you can see it says it will add the results to the pull request. So let's wait for that to finish. 
Okay, so that's uh, finished now. And you can see the drift detection took one minute. This took nine seconds to add to the pull request. So if we go back, there should be a comment here. Perfect, so no drift detection detected. So it is green and then I can click swash and merge. Okay, so now I've taken a few minutes to write a proper um, sort of line for Git here, a uh, title for the pull request as well as a description. Always, always, always do this. Your future self will thank you because when you're working uh, with code that you maintain, something else will pop up and this will be super helpful later as you uh, look at future problems. So this is all set now. This is green. I can merge this. I'm going to click here, do a squash and merge. It's going to um, use that original message I actually don't like so much. Uh, what I can do is just grab this one that I want. So I'll come back down here. There we go. So in a different video, I'll show why this is super important, how I use uh, these conventions um, per conventional commits to auto generate change logs. So that's why I want this version. So I'm going to do squash and merge. And we're done. Now it's in the main branch. So yeah, that's the first 30 minutes of my day today, fixing a merge conflict. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I also wanted to give something back to the folks who are watching all the way to the end. Um, so I want to kind of do a ask me anything, an AMA type video, really short. Uh, ask me your questions in the comments below, sort of anything where I can give a sound bite, two minute answer, right? So it won't be an official Microsoft recommendation, but to celebrate the fact that I am just shy now a thousand subscribers, I wanna try this out. Let's see how it goes. Maybe nobody will ask a question. Um, for those of you who are emailing me, I'm really, really sorry. I'm horrible with emails in terms of answering them. And also as part of my role, I guess, I can't answer them email. Um, post things in social media. So like Twitter, I sometimes respond, but post uh, stuff in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer, right? It's gonna be a sound bite answer, but that's sort of like, okay um, for me and for work. So do that, I'll try my best and we'll see how it goes.